Welcome to Sips and Spirits, a podcast for lovers of both alcoholic and spectral spirits. I am one half of this duo, Chelsea. I'm the other half, Eric. <laughs> Why? It's one word and it throws you <laughs> off completely. All right. So, uh, a little disclaimer before we get started. <laughs> yeah. Slow your horses down. <laughs> <laughs> We're not historians. Any facts or stories presented. I should love talking to the mic. Yeah. Any facts or stories <laughs> presented are from various sources, and we make no claims that these tales are true. We just found it to be spooky and interesting. Indeed. Uh, we are not mixologists on that note. Cocktails and spirits are tasted for the first time, unless noted otherwise during an episode. I messed it up because I'm like, look at the mic, look at the notes. <laughs> look at the mic, look at the notes. <laughs> um, but so for our cryptid episodes cryptid cocktail episodes if you're new here we create a cocktail so we have tasted it before so you guys aren't tasting it along with us but you are getting to sample it (laughs) and we get to share it with you the experience and what you should be tasting and discovering in your flavor palette there we go there we go (laughs) words real words we haven't, those, we're too sober for this. <laughs> we, we haven't started drinking it. We, we did that test enough times before the episode. <laughs> so, if this is your first time once again, or you need a little refresher because it's been about two months since we've been behind the mics, uh, we had a handful of our friends at Midsummer Scream pull a cryptid card from the lovely Crash of the Cryptids um, card deck, which has... 42 different cryptids that we've been drawing and creating cocktails from. So the cryptid for this episode was pulled by Mike of All Hallows Geek. I said, <laughs> I didn't. All Hallows Geek. Again, guys, I'm way too sober for this. <laughs> Mike from All Hallows Geek. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we're going to go ahead and show you that footage right now. All right. Mine is the Yara Mayahu. Okay, well, now we have a re- next reel figured out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an airy frog. It happens. I think it's Keep it together, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you guys saw, Mike pulled the Yara Ma Yahoo. Um, and we had a fun little ditty there with it. It was too funny, but we had not heard of this cryptid, a new one for us, at least new for me. New for me. (laughs) Yep. Um, and we want to give a shout out to Steam and Kittens on Instagram, also known as Shenanigans in Motion on YouTube. She guessed what the cryptid was going to be. So congratulations to you. And if you're curious about how you can guess the next cryptid and get a shout out in our future cryptid episodes stay tuned because that'll be in the details later <laughs> details later all right you ready to taste this cocktail yes but before we do there's... we have a little extra step yeah. that we wanted to get on camera for you guys so oh, yeah. <laughs> whoa that's gonna sound so cool ladies first tell me when Oh, man. <laughs> that, that's good. <laughs> that looks so awesome. Ooh. All right. Looks like blood dripping down, which is the effect we wanted with this. So we did a little experiment in this episode um, with the cocktail because we meant to taste it ahead of time, but we didn't. We used a particular gin as the recipe, and you're going to see that in our recipe later, uh, called Sweet Gwendolyn Gin. But we wanted to see how the cocktail compared when using a different gin because the Sweet Gwendolyn is a fig-infused gin, which is important later on. But uh, So I'm drinking with just Hendrix gin. Um, just Hendrix. You mean Schmendrix. <laughs> I'm using the Schmendrix. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric has the sweet Gwendolyn in his glass. Cheers. So, cheers. <clears throat> that tastes really different. 
In a good way or a bad way? No, it's like still good. Can I? Of course. I need a refresher. Whoa. Oh, yeah. It's definitely different. I was like, maybe it's just been a while since different, we tasted. But not a bad refresher. No, it's still good. So if you guys can't get your hands on Sweet Gwendolyn, because currently they're only selling this gin through their website. If they don't deliver to your state, you can substitute for another botanical-based gin. So, avoid a London gin. Uh, but any botanical or herbal-based gin will be a nice substitute. It'll be a different, slightly different flavor, but it'll still be delightful. This is still really good. Very delightful. Hendrix, found mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. In large and small bottles. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll go for that. Speaking of, before we jump into talking about the Arama Hue, shall we jump into what's been haunting behind the bar? No, we have a bar to hunt behind. <laughs> I know. Look at this, guys. I just, I love it. I love getting to actually say. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> We're behind a bar. <laughs> so, first, you. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have been having really cool experiences mm -hmm. at Winchester Mystery House, as you guys are hearing. It feels like every haunting behind the bar, Chelsea's back at Winchester. <laughs> well, aren't they doing like an episode every, like an episode? <laughs> <laughs> so, every month, there's, so this year marks 100 years since they've been open to the public. So, in uh, 1923 they started having people come and visit the Winchester Mystery House. Mm -hmm. And so they're celebrating that by having a specialty speaker come every month. And last month in January, end of January, they had someone named Jim Wolf, who's an architectural historian, come and talk about the stained glass and where it came from. That is found throughout Winchester Mystery House. And it was a really, really cool lecture. And then as a surprise, like we got to go into the house and tour and look at the windows that were being discussed but in we that lecture. Her and whoever was there. Me and the attendees. I went by myself. I got a, I got a, a mommy, mommy only date. Mommy, <laughs> it was uh, really nice. So thank you for making that happen. Because <laughs> it, it was wonderful. And I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it to that level just having the kids. Of course. Sitting with me. So yeah. it was really, really, really yeah. cool. So if you guys are in the San Jose area at any point throughout the year, check out what their uh, centennial speakers are that month. Because by the time this episode comes out, uh, they will have just done their love, courting, and marriage in the Victorian era speaker <laughs> uh, talk, whatever you, lecture. There lecture, we go. There go. So... I uh, unfortunately can't make it to that one, but it's really, really uh, cool what they're putting together. I love what the historian, Janin Boehm, what she's putting together to just really share and kind of delude a little bit of the mystery of Winchester Mystery House. Yeah. Yeah. So we enjoy cocktails. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoy cocktails. So come listen. If you don't, it's okay. You don't have to enjoy cocktails to listen yeah. to us. But sometimes... We find ourselves, I don't want to bring out the ingredients. I don't want to shake it up. I want to have something right then and there. Mm -hmm. And we're we, lazy too. We're lazy too. <laughs> you know, after long days of work, after dealing with the kids all day, you just want to have something ready to go from the fridge. And as you guys know, we're not beer drinkers. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not one of our things. Uh, I'm not saying there's a bad thing. Just we don't it's enjoy. It's just not our preference. It um, but we recently found a new uh, premix cocktail. Mm hmm. Uh, from Two Chicks is the name of the company. Yep. Distillery company. Manufacturer. Manufacturer. Bottler. Canner. <laughs> Canner. Whatever it is. I don't know. The company is called Two, Two Chicks. Chicks. Uh, yeah. And it comes in, uh, at least the case we saw in Total Wine is four cans. There's actually a can right there There's if you want to reach over. <laughs> there we go. Mm. That's the margarita one. That's the margarita one. Uh, we've had their vodka. The, the vodka and elderflower Power. with pear yeah. was... It was oh, really good. So the first good. one we had. And then we had, this the, is the tequila. The sparkling citrus margarita. Yeah, it was really, really yummy. Tequila lemon lime cocktail. Um, we want to try the others now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we first got it, I was a little concerned because it says sparkling. And most things that have sparkling are kind of like seltzers. 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 seltzers and sorry. Eric, in particular, like I I can take them or leave them. If, it's, if that's all there is, I'll drink it. 
but Eric <laughs> really doesn't I like him. I cannot enjoy them at all, kind of thing. So I was kind of concerned. I had him. I was very uh, pleased with them. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, this one's I'm very pleased as well, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So we're looking forward to the other two flavors that we've seen in Total Wine, yeah. kind of thing. You know, um, it's something that we discovered. Um, Bacardi makes some great, you know, rum drinks, you know, in their camp forms that they're very fun. He, you know, even the, um, what's the coconut one? Pina colada? Mm-hmm. The Bahama Mama, wasn't it? The Bahama Mama, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we had the p- pina colada. Yeah, the, he, and we usually, we're not like big on the coconut flavors. I think we've talked about that here before, but it wasn't too bad, actually. Like 18 years? No, not 18 years ago. That was not drinking then. <laughs> <laughs> when I was closer to my first started drinking age, Bahama Mama was my drink of choice. As I got older, the artificial coconut flavor is just not the new for me. Yeah, well, and you were always ordering Bahama Mamas when we were first yeah, dating. Yeah, kind so. of thing. So, uh, so it's changed a lot since then. But yeah, two chicks. Um, if you're listening, awesome. Yum, yum. Great cocktails. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Yes. So, if you guys are looking for a ready-made cocktail, definitely check out those cans. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, we're happy with them. And then we also happened to just stumble upon, speaking of Hendrix... <laughs> Hendrix, a new, like, limited edition flavor, which is called the Flora Adora. Mm -hmm. And it's so cute, the label. It's, like, pink with, like, these butterflies. I mean, yeah, you could grab it. (laughs) I don't know if we'll see it on the camera, but I love... It's, like, a, like, the rose gold, I guess. But it's got the butterfly with the eyes and some... It's got some roses and lavender from their Cabinet of Curiosities. We haven't tried it yet, um, but... If you're a Hendrix fan or a gin fan, keep an eye out for that. It's their new of the All their flavors are from the Cabinet Curiosities. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, I don't, but the, the original flavor doesn't, though. I can see the bottle right here. Yeah, That's yeah. one, like, great thing about me behind the bar. It's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I can see the bottle there. there we go. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Which our bar makes us really look like alcoholics. But I swear we're only drinking these drinks when we film these episodes. Yeah. We're, we're... I mean... That's not true. When we try and we find one we really like, that ends up being our drink of choice. But it, it may seem because we have a drinking podcast that we're drinking all the time. But that's not actually the nope. case. Nope. <laughs> I don't know why I had to share that, but here we go. I'm like, I need a bigger glass or something. I'm going through this too fast. <laughs> all right. So being parents, mm-hmm. uh, we don't get to choose a lot of our TV shows we get to watch. Nope. And by the time we get to watch TV, we're tired. We just, you know, let's, I don't want to invest in something new and spend too much time on it. So we end up watching a lot of things very late. Mm -hmm. For example, I believe two weeks ago, I finally saw No Way Home Spider-Man movie. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Kind of thing, you know. Yep. Um, And then uh, we got to watch. uh, We we were able to watch Doctor Strange Strange and... Uh, Black Adam, we and finally Adam. watched it, I like, finally. all in the same weekend span. Kind of thing, like, you know, within a couple of days, kind of each other. But, yeah. you know, it's, 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 with my old schedule, it was hard. I came home late. We didn't have time to do things. So I want to spend time with the kids. Yep. And whatnot. And then so, the kids are obsessed with Octonauts and Bluey. So yes. that's, like, that's what we watch. That's what we watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And whatnot. Um, but the other night, we, we got a chance to watch some TV. And we discovered, uh, Chelsea was showing me a show called The Shining Veil with Corny Cox. Yeah. And we saw the first episode and it was quite entertaining. Yes. <laughs> and best part, so that's one of the other problems with shows nowadays that we have. We don't have the luxury to sit through hour plus long episodes. Shining Veil, her episodes are 30 minutes. And I was like, yes. Yes. We can at least like watch the first episode, see how it vibes because the commercial looks really funny, but maybe it's not. And like I'm, I'm not even sure we've talked about this before, but I am a huge Cougar Town fan. <laughs> like I'm obsessed with Cougar Town, and I do love and relate to Courtney Cox's character a lot <laughs> in Cougar Town. <laughs> so I was like, this like looks like Cougar Town, but a little spook in it with with some spookiness in it, and it did not disappoint. At least the first um, episode. It definitely wasn't like it wasn't Cougar Town. Don't go in expecting that, but. You have this older woman with her two teenage children and her husband. They're moving into this new old fixer-upper of a house. (laughs) And uh, uh, the humor is very dark and there are ghosts. And um, 
yeah, it's so, a big mystery and so it, far, it's so 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 far so good. Mm-hmm. Although we're watching it and we're just we're chuckling because it's like, oh my god, this is if my mother was encountering ghosts, this is how my parents would be reacting with each other. <laughs> so love you, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very entertaining show. If you get a chance to if you've seen it already. Let us know what you think. Yeah, it's only eight episodes long, so mm-hmm. we're excited to kind of. It. We'll probably power through it in a week or two. No, we'll, we'll see what we can do with this mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, as you guys see, we're in the location. We're moving. Uh, we're still moving. Uh, there's still uh, pieces and obstacles in our way. You know, we're slowly pulling everything together. Uh, this is one of the places kind of set up, but yeah. even then, we still have things to change. Like we want to get rid of those lights yeah. and. You know, we want to be able to decorate a little more too for us for podcasts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we're also still making things, process going along, you know, slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, if things still seem a little delayed or we're behind on socials, mm-hmm. we're Sorry. still moving in. Probably won't be fully settled till the end of March. Hopefully, but yeah. That's a game plan. Yeah, that's a game plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Post recording, Eric and Chelsea here. <laughs> you realize. We, we forgot one very important thing that's going to be haunting behind very, the bar. Very, very important. Very soon. So this Saturday. Saturday. February 19th. Yes. We are doing an Instagram live Ooh. with Mike of All Hallows Geek. He's going to be taste testing this cocktail. The Aramaya Who. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we mentioned, he is the one who pulled the card. So we have been inviting all our friends who pulled a card to come and do an Instagram live either before or after the episode drops. So this time worked for Mike, and we hope you guys will come join us on Instagram. That's Sips and Spirits to uh, watch All Hallows Geek taste test this cocktail. You have any questions for them? You can come and bring them up. You can ask them there or, you know, get hear about them and their thoughts on the cocktail. Yeah. So if you drop them before 5 p.m. on February 19th, let's say about 4 p.m., and uh, we'll be sure to jot those questions down for there Mike. There we go. Okay. All right. So don't forget like we did. <laughs> <laughs> see you then. See you then. And one last thing. As you guys see, we have and a here. lovely new toy. You might not see it. Oh, sorry. Here and see. <laughs> or here or see. Or both. Whatever. We have a lovely new toy. Yes. Thank you, Mobo. We got a new mic. They didn't give it to us. We bought no, it. No, we bought it. But Movo, you ever want to sponsor us? <laughs> Movo, if you want us to test. We'll gladly test any mic you want to send our way yes. because we started our podcast with Movo mics. I actually won a little travel Movo mic to plug into my phone. It makes my audio sound so great when we go places. If you guys are traveling together with friends and you want to have like record your conversation on your phone. Plug that in, yeah. put it in your dashboard or your phone stand, and it records amazing. Yes. Like, yeah. it didn't come from your phone kind, kind of, of audio. Yeah. And yeah, and so we have this lovely new mic. And hopefully and it's recording properly. Yes, we're hoping. <laughs> we're hoping. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we had a chance to check. You know, we, we're back to our old system. Um, sort the, of, the, because... The, we, Back to regular mics with XLR cables, yeah. but we're on one mic right one now. Mic, yeah. Does it sound like it, guys? Mm-hmm. How cool is this? I'm yeah. like so excited. Our digital mics weren't working for this area or for the setup, so we decided to go this back down. Yep. So here we are. You guys ready? That's about it for what's been going on behind the bar and what we've been haunting. Um, so shall we go talk about the cocktail? I guess. That's the next part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So the ingredients in this cocktail, as always, you guys know how much we love a simple cocktail. Um, Presentation might get a little fancy sometimes, but the cocktail itself is always pretty straightforward, or we like to think that it is. So we have two ounces of sweet Gwendolyn gin or a botanical gin of your choice, one ounce of honey simple syrup, and a half lemon oops i wrote that wrong (laughs) half a lemon which is about three quarters of an ounce um sometimes it's half an ounce depending on your lemon and how juicy it is so juicy um and then we have this beautiful sparkling red wine and i make a point of saying it's sparkling red so it's really dark you when you're looking it doesn't have to be this brown. We found the Forbidden Kiss, which happened to just be appropriate <laughs> for what we're going to be discussing. Um, but any dark red sparkling wine 
will be perfect for this cocktail because we've had quite a few dark red yeah. and they fall in the same category of flavor palettes. Please don't use a rosé. It's not going to taste good. And it, you're not going to get the cool little bleeding effect that you saw earlier. I really wonder uh -huh. how Fantasia will taste with this. I think it tastes really good. Fantasia. It might make it a bit too sweet mm -hmm. or it might make it a little bit on the tartier side. Mm -hmm. Because Fantasia has both those things, and it could make it go either way. We'll have to find that when we get a new bottle. Yes, Fantasia is one of our Spark our rest. fun, fun, fun wines when we don't feel like a serious wine <laughs> to enjoy from our favorite winery, Castello di Amorosa. In case you guys are like, what is we just that? went off on a tangent here. <laughs> Welcome to a Sips of Spirit. We talk about a lot of things. All right, so we chose. Or I proposed mm -hmm. the sweet Gwendolyn because it is a fig infused gin. And that's important because our cre cryptid, le, creature cryptid, <clears throat> the Yaramayahu. I said that right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> is said to live in fig trees mm -hmm. it and, it, and that's where it hunts from it prefers fig trees yes. yes so fig trees are its number one favorite place to hang and there's more to that yes so um we did the red sparkling to represent a consumption of blood mm -hmm. it did have as it was poured in hopefully mm -hmm. you guys if it didn't work in the video you'll see it in the cocktail mixing how it kind of just like looks like Blood bleeding into the cocktail. It's a really cool effect. Very cool. Um, so we use the red sparkling to represent that consumption of blood because this is a blood sucker we're dealing with. And the honey syrup was to bring out the fig flavors, which as we compared, it really does bring out the fig flavors. Yep. But if you don't care about the symbolism in that, just want a good cocktail, the Hendrix is still doing its job. Mm -hmm. um, and it... That honey syrup really did tie the gin and the wine together. Yeah. Like we were having a bit of a disconnect when we were testing this cocktail, but choosing to do the honey simple syrup just did this magic trick. I yeah. don't know what it was, but suddenly everything you just catch more bonded. Flies with honey <laughs> than with vinegar. I guess so. Oh, there we go. We got another uh, froggy <laughs> pun going here. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Anything you want to add on the tasting palette to this one? Like, so, what flavors are you getting? Um, it, it, it's, it's hmm. I don't want to say it's sweet, but it's enjoyable. It's a tarty sweet. It's a tarty sweet. Not like overly would, sweet like candy. Because right. you're thinking honey simple syrup, you're thinking it might be very sweet with the red sparkling. With the ingredients, very easily you could mistake it for mm. a yummy drink. Yeah, right? but, it, but it's not. It, you know, you, you do get that, that wine flavor in it because it tops it off kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of gin, but the, like I said, the honey is not overpowering. Like, oh my god, I'm just drinking straight up syrup. No, syrup. it's it's a bonder. Yeah, and so it, it's it does its job really it's very nice nicely because it's cold, that's refreshing kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, it's been great to you know after a long day of work, just getting to enjoy something like this. Yes. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> I think for that, but no, it's very great. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, I love that it's both sweet but tarty. Like, you're not getting one more than the other. It's a very nice balance. So, and if you're curious about where you can find the recipe for this, we got a page for that. So you go to our website, sipsandspirits.com, and we have a lovely little tab called Cocktails. And at the time of listening to this, you'll see it there. If not, you can scroll down and it'll be there you'll find it later yeah and yeah. if not it's always in our show notes a direct link you'll find out in the, the version recipe. pre <laughs> um sparkling and pass pro <laughs> what's pre po no pre anyway Neither here or there. <laughs> what <laughs> okay so now let's get into the fun spooky part of this thing mm. okay once again our cards come from class of the cryptids from after afterlight comics um, a card game, 42 different cryptids. We've never played a card game, but we've pulled quite a bit of cryptids out. Because we just love the artwork. We love the artwork. This. It's really cool, and it, it decided it would, be, it would be a great idea for the podcast. Mm -hmm. So, according to Class of the Cryptids, the Yaramaya Who, found in Australian Aboriginal mythology, has the appearance of a small frog-like man with red skin, a large head, 
a huge mouth without any teeth, but suckers on the palms of its hands and feet. It is said to live in fig trees, where the creature then drops down and uses the suckers to drain the victim's blood. Very, very yummy. Mm-hmm. I'll probably repeat this uh, in their story. I know I will. Uh-huh. Um, but some people describe the Yeramayahu who as a goblin, and some okay. people describe it as a vampire-like creature because of its sucking abilities. The or blood sucking. The blood sucking kind of thing. Yeah. You know. You know, uh, and it's something that we've talked about before. You know, how different regions have similar like creatures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just been squeaking this whole time, and squeaky, I don't know squeaky, what squeaky, to squeaky, do. Squeaky. But yeah, no. So we're gonna start with a few facts about the. Yaramayahu. Yeah, who <laughs> it is very, very annoying to type this multiple times. <laughs> Yaramayahu. Yes, it just it, it doesn't flow very nicely at the keyboard. <laughs> kind of thing. So anyway. So we all know Australia is the land of some of the most dangerous creatures. Mm-hmm. Like the cassowary birds, stonefish, blue winged octopus, funnel web spiders, and brown snakes, to name a few. It is also home of the Yaramaya Hu. The Yaramaya Hu is a legendary creature found in Australian mythology. Some call it a goblin or a vampire. The legend is recounted by David Unaipon, an Aboriginal Australian preacher, inventor, and author. He was a, I cannot pronounce this, Nagarinjeri. Unaipon's contributor in the Australian society helped to break many Aboriginal Australian, uh, Aboriginal Australian stereotypes. And he was also featured in the Australian $50 note, which is like oh, their cool. bill. And a commentator of his work, he was a son of a preacher and writer of James Unaipon. Okay. According to the legends, the creature resembles a red like a red frog like man with a very big head, a large mouth with no teeth, and suckers at the end of his hands and feet. The Yaramaya who is only active during the day and only targets living prey. Playing dead until sunset, it is said to only hunt during the day, is offered as a ploy to avoid an attack. Stories of this creature were reportedly told to mischievous behaving mis- mischievous behaving children. Okay. That is a long time to pretend to be dead. Mm-hmm. Especially for children. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, man. They live mostly in thick leafy trees and prefer, like we said, wild fig trees. They do not hunt for their food, but simply pounce upon a person and place their hands and feet upon the victim, draining his blood. The Yaramaya who does not try to suck all the blood from the body, but leaves sufficient to keep the victim alive while he walks around and gets an appetite. After he returns, he lies down on the ground, facing the victim, crawls like a guana or a monster lizard. Opens his mouth wide and sucks the spray into his mouth, into his mouth head first. He then r- r- rises and stands on his legs and dances around until the prey w- is well inside his stomach. Then he goes to a river or a pool of water and drinks copious amount of water before falling asleep. Wait, 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 wait! I missed something between the he crawls around like a lizard. And then he's dancing around. To move him around his stomach so he can come down. So, wait. Between the monitor lizard and so, dancing around, he eats him? No. He, he, he crawls there and eats him head first. Okay, I missed that part. Okay. He I him. was writing my notes. So Sorry, he, my bad. He eats him head first and then stands up, shakes around a little bit, moves it down the stomach, and then he goes, you know what? I'm thirsty. After all that blood, I'm And so then thirsty. drowns you just in case. Okay. So well, he doesn't suck you dry. No, wait, wait, let's oh keep going. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, it doesn't. It's not over. No, it's not. He drinks copious amount of water before falling asleep. After waking up, the Yaramaya who vomits his prey out. The human is almost always alive and playing dead, hopefully. There is no reason to fight back as a creature can overpower the strongest of men. The Yaramaya who takes five paces, then returns and pucks his victim with stick. Your life. <laughs> then it walks away ten paces, and before it and returning back, it tickles a human under his arm and neck. After that, he takes a fifty-yard stroll 
and is followed up by more tickling. Then the Yarmai who goes behind a bush and sleeps. This ritual is always repeated, every time. The Yarmai who know that if they fail to carry out these actions, the spirit of the fig tree will mumble into his ear, causing him to transform into a glowing tree mushroom. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the fig spirits. The fig tree spirit. Yes, will mumble into his the Yarmai the Yarmai who's ear and make him into a glowing tree mushroom. If he doesn't do this, he doesn't. Interesting. What is this extreme dining ritual? <laughs> I have no idea. Wow. For this I'm glad reason, I don't have to do all this, I have to do a lot as a mom with kids <laughs> while trying to eat. It is not that labor intensive. Oh my god. For this reason, it is safe to play dead until this point. When you get to your feet and run, where have you gone, my victim? Calls the Yarmai who, if he hears you escaping, but his awkward gait makes it easy to run. After failing to recapture prey, a spiteful Yamahu will drink up all the water in the nearby wells and waterholes, leading people to seek, seek liquid from the tree sap, and thus end up exposing to a Yamahu attack. Clever. A person who is oops, sorry, my notes are falling down. <laughs> who is caught and swallowed by one of the red men becomes shorter with each capture, until at last he resembles a Yamahu. What are you trying to say here? <laughs> How many tests have you been here by <laughs> Hamai Who? It's so some cool facts. Indeed. Are you ready for some story? Or a story, You I always have the facts and then a story. Like, bonus. <laughs> well, yeah, like, you gotta learn about it, you know. Yeah. Like, the cards themselves have some information. Right, right. But, I like, I want to give more of this, of the, this kind of thing. Like, one but more. But sometimes just the descriptions are enough. Oh, yeah. Because. Yeah, like, there's a lot. Whoa. Yes, I'm ready for a story. <laughs> it was a long day of exploring and following the tour guide, but Greg was getting bored. It felt like he was listening to a retelling of a wiki article for Australia. Things everyone has heard about kangaroos, wallabies, deadly spiders, and snakes. If he knew ahead of time this was going to be a tour, he would have just stayed in his hotel room and just YouTube information while enjoying a local beer. Boring. As the tour continued to bore Greg, he decided since he might not get a chance to be out here again to make it into a little adventure. As the tour van was traveling through the long tree fringe path leading back to the resort, he said to take a quick leap off and go into the trees. Oh yeah, that's smart. At first, Greg felt exhilarating being in his heart. The most daring thing had he had done before was put a tongue on a six volt battery. He stayed at home read fantasy books, playing D&D with close new friends. But just like this trip, he wanted to make the memory to remember. But a few turns left and right, and his beating heart was now pumping for a different reason. It all started to look the same. Was it back there where the van was? Or maybe this way? Greg had started to... Greg ne never had gone camping. The closest thing to, outdoor, uh, to outdoors was a camping campaign he ran with friends exploring a make-believe forest. Nice move, Greg. Fear began to fill him. It was a mid-afternoon, so he was peering through the canopy. After what seemed like hours, he took a rest in the tree. When he leaned back and saw up on the branches, he noticed a fairly large creature squatting on the sturdy branch's head. A koala, maybe he thought, or even a tree kangaroo. He reached for his phone to try to snap a picture of it. As he focused more on the creature, he noticed more, more red scale-like skin. Maybe the heat was getting to him, because such colors seemed unnatural to Greg. The creature had his back turned to Greg, so as he stood to try to get a look at his front side, Greg broke a dry, shed twig, which snapped very loudly in the stillness of the forest. This caused the creature to turn and glaze, glare back and with his hideous face. Greg realized it was no kangaroo or koala, but rather something worse, something he had recognized from his D&D books, the Yaramayahu. In the amazement and shock to see this creature, Greg stood still frozen as the creature stared back. Twin glo gloves of glowing evil eyes almost filled his entire face within his very large head. Hands stretching towards him, and then BAM! The Yamahu had leaped towards Greg, knocking him down and mounting over him. The Yamahu slowly wrapped his legs ar <clears throat> around Greg and bringing his hand onto Greg's neck, grazing his quivering body. 
As he lay there, the foul vampiric beast mounted on top of him. He could feel each sucker drawing blood from his body, draining him of any energy he had. If this was the end, Gray would have been fine with this, but he knew it wouldn't end there. When the Yamai Hu seemed satisfied with drinking, it opened his white toothless mouth and like a snake dislocated in his jaw, he leaned into Greg in a single enormous gulp and swallowed him home, weak and paralyzed with fear, but still alive and conscious. The Yarmai Hu performed a little macabre dance to move Greg down comfortably into his stomach. Though one would think its thirst would be quenched, the Yarmai Hu walked down to a river nearby to cl- and cleanse its palate once more. Drink and drink. Greg began to worry that he might drown inside the stink's stomach. Then Greg felt as he had fallen, and after some time, heard a weird rasping breathing as it was coming from this creature. Trying to recall the knowledge he had on this creature, he realized that this, that, that this creature was snoring and had the Yaramai who had fallen asleep. Maybe I tried to escape, Greg thought, as he tried to wiggle out but also not wake his predator, but with the wrong step, the snoring stopped. He felt movement again, walking, and he began to hear a gagging noise over and over uh. until Greg was vomited out. Grossed out, Greg just lay there, frozen, trying to process all that had happened. His concentration was broken when the Yarmai Hu pucked him with a stick, but Greg did not flinch. As his focus was returning, he noticed the Yarmai Hu walking away, and then rushed back and then tried to tickle him. Yes, the Yarmai Hu was trying to tickle Greg, but in his confusion and shock, it did not affect him. Then once more, the creature walked away, now out of sight. Greg knew this was the time to run. He mustered whatever strength he had left and got up and began to move, slowly but away, anywhere but here, he thought. He continued to stumble and tried to run until, as by some miracle, he had, he was back at the resort. The desk clerk welcomed him. The tour guide saw him walk past and lobby and greeted him, unknowingly that he had just jumped out of the van earlier. Greg went straight to his room to wash off the forest, the vomit, and the whole day away, hopefully. <laughs> After drying himself, he noticed some of his body had had a rare tint. Maybe some sunburns, he thought. He, was dre- he dressed, but... Had to keep adjusting and adjusting. He then realized that his pants seemed to have been an inch or two long. This is odd. All his clothes fit great before he got here. And then he screamed, remembering one more thing. As the Yama, Yaramaya who consumes you over and over again, you begin to shrink and shrink until you are a Yaramaya. <sighs> yum, yum. So delightful. So I have a couple questions. Yes. Like, um, I have some answers. Tree kangaroo. Tree kangaroo. Like, yes. I didn't know there's tree kangaroos. What the heck is a tree kangaroo? We'll find out later. Um. Anyways, and then this is the thing. Like, I just see with suckers repeatedly. Like, how are they just like assuming the suckers work so hard? They're pulling blood through the skin. Like, Most likely. Just probably think like a bruise. So they probably bruise your skin and then pierce. But they're, they're drinking your blood. Yeah. Like, I always wonder, just in other renditions, mm-hmm. not just in the case of the Yaramai Hu, but uh, anything. Like, we've seen, like, blood sucker creatures before. And mm-hmm. I always wonder about that. Like, how does that work? Maybe they have, like, teeth in there kind of thing. Or maybe I don't they know. Have... I feel like I have to do some research on this <laughs> now. Because <laughs> it always makes me, like, wonder. That, that's a lot of force. And it mm-hmm. seems like... Excuse me. More well, work than it's worth. And I am... I kind of feel bad for the Yaramahu. Not in the way I felt bad for the Squonk, but... And that is like, this is so flipping complicated and he's doing it just so he doesn't have to become a mushroom. Mm-hmm. And eat. He gets to eat. Kind of. <laughs> That's how he gets to eat. <laughs> I mean, the tickling, like, that kills me. <laughs> no, just like, tickle, tickle, tickle. like this giant frog man. He's no, not like... giant. They're tiny. <clears throat> like four feet tall. Okay. They're not the size of a normal frog. They're no. A giant okay. frog shaped man. Yes. Okay. I was reading up when I was reading up on the facts about it. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are trying to justify what is the Yaramaya who? You seen those like weird monkeys? They have like big eyes and like fingers are, like really fat. They're just called like tansiers. Yeah, tansiers. People have like thought like, well, maybe it was a tansier, but like they don't have no. suckers. 
They're not red either. No, they're not. They're kind of. And they're furry. They're furry. And they have teeth. Some Yamaha Hoos are described with have fur versus scales. Mm. But those are scaly. But those, the Tanzanias or Tanzanias or whatever, they have their own like legends. And also, stuff, so. not in Australia. What? The Tanzanias. Yeah, it's Brazil or something. The things of Africa. It, it's, yeah, I thought it's South America. Maybe, I don't remember. I, I'm, well, actually, I don't know. Where's the rainforest? <laughs> Uh, there's rainforests everywhere. There's a rainforest in Africa. There's a rainforest in Australia. There's a rainforest in South America. Okay, well, what the Amazon rainforest in Brazil? Okay, so I'm fairly certain that's where it lives. I might be wrong, but uh, my zoology knowledge makes me think that's correct. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're, no, they're, they're not in they're, Australia. Like people say that, but they don't sound like, but they don't live anywhere near Australia. Mm-hmm. So, what's going on? Australia is weird. It's like the Galapagos. It's just got its old, own completely unique ecosystem. Yeah. I mean, how can you have the top 10 deadliest spiders, top 10 deadliest um, snakes. snakes, top 10 most aggressive sharks that come to hang out in your waters, like they migrate to your waters? What is the coincidence in that? Survival of the They're Highlanders. Well... I feel like that's the motto of Australia. <laughs> Highlander. It <laughs> killed be one. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a interesting story. Um, I found out Yamaha is a D&D character. Um, is it really? Yeah, it is in like, D&D. That's hilarious. It, well, I love okay, when a character is a, it's, it's, a, it's not a, a right term, but there's a, there's reference to no, it. No, no, but like I do, like I love in Castlevania, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Where they have the ghouls. And I was like, oh, are those ghouls? Because they haven't introduced it yet until you mm-hmm. look in your creature book. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, those were ghouls. Yeah, and then uh, there's also in uh, Final Fantasy, there's a mm-hmm. Yamaha Hawk creature. Kind of thing. Oh, hey, look at that. You know, kind of thing. So it, it was very cool. That uh, apparently see. a little bit more mainstream than we realized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of thing. So cool, interesting. Lots of... Very interesting. Yeah. I wonder if we could find it in my uncle's D and D book. Maybe we should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> we found a very old D and D book. Yeah, and like, uh, it, it, it's legitimately. It's got to be from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Not exaggerating. So we'll have to look into it. Kind of all thing. right. But yeah. Cool. 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 That's all I really had. Cause ooh, ooh, that's a trip. <laughs> Again, vomited it out and possibly re eaten. All right. So you ready for a? Cryptid guess who? Yeah, I have not read this one yet. You haven't read it? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, I'm trying. I know what the last ones are. I don't remember what the order is. But I was like, let's see. All right, well, here, here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. They come to your bedside in the darkest of night. Human in form, sometimes eyes glowing bright. Whom are these figures that wake you from your sleep? Hiding in the shand- shadows, these forms are known to creep. <laughs> I wish I could do that without laughing because I'm just so proud of <laughs> what job. I did. Good job. That's a good one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, if you think you might know what the cryptid is to that cryptid guess who, leave your guess on Instagram, our website in the show notes, or email us at contact at sipsandspirits.com and we'll share your guess out. Oh, that's a weird way to word that, Chelsea. We'll share your guess in the next cryptid episode. I think you meant shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's what I meant. We'll shout out your guess <laughs> and your handle. <laughs> she has not been drinking when she was writing this. So that's why it's all like mishmash. Yeah. She's a Morocco. I'm just too sober for these mm-hmm. notes. But yeah. But yeah, so we love when you guess, even if you don't guess the right guess. We still share it because apparently sometimes it's the right guess. We've had that a couple of times. Well, it's a, because these creatures the have um, have different names. Different titles. Not only stuff. the Green Man. Um, the, what was the other one? Oh, the Barkus too Barkus, was yeah. another one. Yeah. They have different names. The Black Shoal. Yeah. Right? Kind of thing. So. Yeah. So Shoot make your, shot. your guess. Shoot your shot. Yep. 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 Let us know what you think. Kind mm-hmm. of thing. You ready for wrap this up? Yeah. Okay. That went pretty good, I yeah. think. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's been recording. Hopefully this uh, I don't know if we can recreate this. Yes. In a, 
it was her, good. her face of disgust of hearing this story for the first time. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so thanks I don't a lot. Really want to hear it again. <laughs> thanks for sipping along with us. Uh, we want to keep the spirits flowing. So if you enjoy the show, please support us by following, subscribing, sharing us with others. Uh, you know, tell them about cool cop, cool cops. We're cool, cool cops. cops. <laughs> I don't like it, cool what? cocktails. Uh, fun cocktails. You know, you can impress your friends. Like, hey, look, I made this cool cocktail. And they're like, oh, it's not that big. I'm going to finish in the shot. Wait, I'm not done. Pour, pour, pour. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Fancy. <laughs> kind of thing, you know. Um, cool stories. Uh, you get to learn about different uh, cryptids from all yep. around the world. Kind of thing. So, you know, if you feel like you have not been talked about yet, hopefully we'll get around to you. Yep. If you have a cryptid in your area that you don't think might be in these cards and you want us to to talk about it let us know we love the reason we got this we love to learn about different cryptids we love cryptozoology you know (laughs) if we could we will all be quasi yep (laughs) but unfortunately we cannot be pirate cats i mean we have a fun story for that. I feel like we need to have an episode about quasis. Quasis itself. Just, just go over all these little tales. Yeah. Anyway. Look it up. If you have no idea, look up what a quasi is. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> um, we love cryptids. We love to learn about them. We love to learn about their... Um, what's the one looking for? They're part of different people's cultures. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing, you know. Kalapaluic and Alaskan aborigines is culture. You know. Now the Yamaya who kind of thing. And the other ones kind of thing. So... If you feel like yours is not going to be featured or you want it to be featured sooner than later, let us know. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Because we love them cryptids. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, I'm not even wearing my cryptid overalls. It's nope. too cold right now. No, it's not. I'm sweating here. <laughs> oh, you are. I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we are revamping our email newsletter Go ahead and sign up now to get the latest and greatest when we figured out what direction we're taking it. <laughs> well, we actually get it done. <laughs> um, but it's very easy to sign up. A little window pops up when you visit our website for yeah. the first time. Um, every time I go on my phone. Well, so it refreshes like every two weeks or something. Okay. So. Every time I go on my phone, it's like pops up. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to change it to like just once a month. It's a little obnoxious. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can... Go to sipsandspirits.com slash happy hour and add your information there or find the link in any of our social media bios. We have a link directly to joining and signing up. So we'd love to have you. We try, we're we changing what we're doing with it to kind of give a little bit more behind the scenes vibes, I think, instead of what we were doing before. So it should be fun. It should be fun. We're, <laughs> We're working on it. Making it happen, yes. <laughs> um, and if you are curious about watching us or listening to us, maybe you found us on YouTube and you want to know where you can listen to us instead, or vice versa, you're like, oh, wait, you actually recorded video of this? Yes, yeah, we, we do. do. <laughs> it was a, a demand of mine. So you can find us on YouTube and all hosting. What are, what are they called? All podcast hosts. There That's what they're called. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, yeah, podcast. <laughs> On all podcast hosts, uh, including Pandora. Yay. Hi, that, Pandora. That's kind of cool to say. We're on Pandora. We're on Pandora. Um, but Apple, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to your podcasts or watch. If you're a YouTuber, you can find us there. Otherwise, you can find us on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, under Sips and Spirits. And uh, yeah, we do fun things there. Like we just did a really funny reel, our We're Back reel. We're back. Uh... (laughs) Back streets, back Sips and Spirits, back. All right. Don't do that. Come see our new set. It's so much fun. I have to be here for this. <laughs> <laughs> and now you guys are too. <laughs> All right. So we ready to close this tab? Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for sipping along with us. As always. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.